Papa and I met at the dancing. As I said, there was a lot of dancing nowadays when we were growing up. But uh, that's where we met. That's where your grand were crossing off of me. So that's how we stood up coming up there. <laughs> I said, you want a last dance? She says, OK. So we had a last dance. No. And I says, where do you live? She says, Larkfield. I said, oh, I love it that way as well. So we got, you say, buses run you home. So on the bus, I took her home, but I didn't. I dropped her off and I stayed on the bus and went home. I said, we'll see you next Saturday. And that's how it continued. And uh, next Saturday we met again. That's mm -hmm. And I was still in school at that point. No, I didn't know that. She was uh, I was still in school. And the school I went to was called the, the Finnick. And uh, he worked in the garage just around the corner for the school. So I used to see him coming up the road. And I'd say, oh, well, that guy. He asked me to dance. That's him over there, you know. We get married pretty young, eh? Yeah. We did. Well, yeah. Just turned 16. I just turned 19. No. Yeah. No. Oh, it was later than that. It was later than that. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and then we got married and we had a baby. And then the year after that, we had another baby. And then two years after that, we had another one. And that was it. Stop. Three girls. The both of us were bringing the, the three of them up. I mean, I could rely on it, change a diaper and things like that, you know, Feed like, them, yeah. yeah, bath them. Because I had a nighttime job as well, you know, I was out just part time at night, maybe six o'clock to nine. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'd come home and the kids would be bath and there was nighties on, or they'd be in bed, it all depends when I got home. But uh, no, he, I could rely on him, no problem, no problem at all. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Need me. I'll put them to bed. We'll carry on. Typical kids, right? And I'll stand at the bottom of the stairs and go, and see what's got them getting to bed. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> now, ten minutes later, they go again. Mm, going at it again. Get them going out, you know, skittering into the bed again. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They were good kids. Yeah. I'll tell you, they used to, uh, they were pretty singers and dancers, you know. Problem because the, back then there wasn't much going on for them. But uh, they used to have concerts outside and they'd invite all the kids in the street to come and they'd, they'd sit them on a stair and plus they'd ask me to get them a packet of Smarties, the, the tube of Smarties, and I'd get them. They'd put them in a saucer and they would charge the kids come in and they open the gate and let them in say, it cost you a penny again. And the kids would run home, get a penny and come and give them. My three girls would dance and sing, you know. And the kids were all sitting in the step, oh, oh, you know. And then they'd clap, you know. And him and I would be the one day, I said, look at them entertaining all the kids. And then they'd have a break and they'd give them all a couple of wee smarties each. <laughs> smarties each. And that was it. But they entertained the street, they did. They, they'd call the kids down. Many's a time we're going to have a concert. I want you to run, and get a penny, and come in. Uh, yeah. That, that uh, money was supposed to go to charity. <laughs> Aye, the money was supposed to go to charity, but it never got to charity. School, right? Never yeah. got to charity. No, they they, it. Yeah, they spent it up and buy themselves some some candies. Remember the time uh, the seagulls? There were a lot of seagulls flying outside, and all the noise. And I said, "My God, what's going on out there?" And I'm out looking, and. The three girls would sit and eat their dinner together, you know, and uh, <laughs> it wasn't till later on they found out. They were throwing their dinner out and the birds were going nuts trying to get the food, eh? Yeah. And then mine used to pull out the cooker to clean behind it. Yeah. And there Stuff were the chalk bones, chicken bones, bits of chicken and but they'd throw their dinner behind the cooker. And I, what if they didn't want, they'd just throw it behind the cooker. Oh, we had to keep our eye on them. When we came to Canada, uh, my kids were, one was six year old, uh, eight and nine. Yes, yeah, six, eight and nine, that's how old they were when we came. So they were going to be starting school, you know. The youngest one had just started back in Scotland, this, we were moving her, so. But they adjusted pretty good, mm -hmm. they did. The teachers. I know one of the problems was Phyllis. Yeah, I think Phyllis had a bit of a problem at school. Aye, because she said people didn't know what she was saying, you know, so. <laughs> and Jillian said, that's me, she said. 
I'm going to be speaking two languages. I'm going to be speaking Canadian and English. I love two. Terry was the best, your mother. So I can speak three languages. So what's that? Canadian, Scottish, and uh, English. <laughs> <laughs> oh. For you, what does true love mean? Respect. Being honest with each other. I mean, you have your wee ups and downs, but you get over it. Mm -hmm. That's what you've got to do, because marriage is a two way street. Mm -hmm. You've got to come and go with each other. And we help each other out, the housework, and when the kids, you know, and then we've always done that. I hope we talk, talk our kids to do the same thing. But that's, you've got to be honest. Yeah, that's, he's said it all. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I hope you take that to heart when you get married. It's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. you tell your husband's that, it's a two-way mm -hmm. street. Fifty-fifty. Fifty-fifty. You'll go on. You'll love happily ever after. Mm-hmm. <laughs>